In order to begin using your ESP32, you'll have to install the Arduino IDE application. Open your browser and search for Arduino IDE. Navigate to the download page and select the appropriate installer for your operating system. This tutorial is made using macOS, but don't worry if you're using Linux or Windows, Arduino IDE works in exactly the same way. Once it's downloaded, unzip the file and run the application. The first thing you need to do is add the library for ESP32s. Open Preferences and where it says Additional Boards Manager URLs, paste in the link in the description and press OK. Next go to Tools and select Board and then click Boards Manager. Search for ESP32 and you will now be able to install the library for the device. Once that's finished installing, go to Tools then Boards again and this time you will be able to select ESP32 Arduino followed by ESP32 Dev Module. This lets Arduino IDE know which device we're using. There's one more setting we need to change for this project. Click Tools a final time and change the upload speed to 115200. Now let's check everything's working correctly by loading a simple program to the ESP32. Arduino IDE comes with some built-in examples to get started. Select File, then Examples, and choose Basics from the built-in examples list. Select the program called Blink. This sketch uses a variable called LED built-in, but doesn't define it. We have to define it ourselves by typing in int LED underscore built-in equals 2, and remember to end the line with a semicolon. Pin 2 on the ESP32 is the onboard blue LED which is built into the device. Now save your changes with Command S on Mac or Control S on Windows. Now connect your ESP32 to your computer via its micro USB port. Click the arrow button here to begin uploading the script to the ESP32. The script will take a few seconds to compile and then ask you to select a serial port. Select USB. It will now connect and begin writing your script to the Arduino. When it's finished, it will immediately execute the script. The blue LED should now begin flashing. Now let's get the Arduino to work with infrared. Go to the Arduino IR GitHub repository. When I came to do this project myself, I found all the YouTube tutorials were outdated. Most videos were from around 2017, when the Arduino IR remote library did not fully support the ESP32. This is no longer the case. As you can see, this library does support the ESP32, and you no longer need to use the forked repositories like you had to a few years ago. To download the library, select the green Code button at the top, then click Download Zip. You don't need to unzip this. Open Arduino IDE again, and go to Sketch, Include Library, and Add.zip Library. Navigate to the zip file you just downloaded. You should now be able to access the example sketches from the IR Remote Library. Choose Simple Receiver. Before we can transmit an IR signal to control a device like a TV, we have to record the IR signal from the TV remote so we know what signal to send out. This is a simple script which allows us to record the IR signals from a remote. In the tab at the top, there is a configuration file called pindefinitionsandmore.h. It lists which pins we need to connect on the ESP32. For the receive pin, we use pin D15. For the send pin, which we'll use later, it is pin D4. If for any reason you want to use different pins, you will have to change this file to reflect that. I bought the simple IR receiver and transmitter modules on eBay. These already have the circuitry built in to work at 38 kHz. They work at 5V or 3.3V, but I'm going to use 5V. 
Both the receiver and the transmitter each have three pins, VCC, ground and data. To connect up the receiver, connect the VCC pin to the 5 volt pin on the ESP32. The 5 volt pin is labelled VIN. Connect the ground to any ground pin and connect the data pin to pin D15. The simple receiver sketch will work without any changes to the script, so we can go ahead and upload it now. Once it's finished writing, open the serial monitor by clicking the magnifying glass near the top. Now aim your remote at the receiver and press the buttons. You should see data being printed to the serial monitor. You won't be able to read anything because you have to change the setting at the bottom to 115200 to match the upload speed. Now press buttons on the remote again and you should be able to read the data coming from it. I want to record the power button. I am now only pressing the power button each time. The data begins with 0x and then shows a unique code for each button. For my power button it says the address is 0x4 and the command is 0x8. These are hexadecimal numbers so don't be alarmed if yours contains letters instead of numbers. Press the button multiple times to make sure you have an accurate reading of the data. Close the serial monitor. We are now ready to configure the transmitter. Go to File, Examples, scroll down to IR Remote and choose Simple Sender. We do have to make some changes with this one. Like we did with the Blink sketch, we have to define a pin for LED built in. So add the line int LED underscore built in equals 2, then save the change. Scroll down until you get to this section. Here you define the data you want to transmit from your transmitter module. For me, my power button had an address 0x4 and the command was 0x8. Change yours to reflect the data you recorded in the last step. At the bottom, there is this confusing piece of code which changes the address and command. It is only for demonstration and tells you in the comment that it normally makes no sense. This is true, so we should delete it. Now connect the transmitter module. This time, connect the D4 pin to the data pin on the module. Now you can upload the sketch to the ESP32. The program sends a signal pulse once every second. Hold your transmitter aimed at the device you want to control to test if it is working. I am simulating the power button on the remote. As you can see, the TV powers on. At the moment, the script just loops and sends a signal pulse every second. I wanted to be able to control my TV via Wi-Fi, and this is really easy to do. Go to File, Examples, and under Examples for ESP32 Dev Module, choose Wi-Fi, then select Simple Wi-Fi Server. In order for it to connect to your Wi-Fi, enter the SSID and password for your network. In this basic example, you are able to trigger pin 5 high or low by making a client request to your ESP32. This is only a demo, so I'm going to change pin 5 to the onboard blue LED we used before. Go ahead and change all the 5s to 2s. There are 3 of them. One here, and two more down here. Now save the changes you made. Click Upload and immediately open the serial monitor. Once it's finished writing the script, the program will run and will output the IP address of your ESP32 to the serial monitor. Copy the IP address and paste it into your browser. Add a slash H after the address and hit Enter. By simply visiting the URL, we can control the Arduino. The blue LED turns on. Replace the H with an L and the LED will turn off. 
you can use the HTML links to switch easily between the two web pages. If you go to my GitHub page, you can find my script where I've combined the simple sender and simple Wi-Fi server together to control the device over Wi-Fi. Download the zip, extract the files, and then open the sketch. Simply update these details for your network and your remote. Triggering your Arduino from the command line is easy using curl with Mac or Linux. For example, you might have a Raspberry Pi which you want to control your TV with. Run curl followed by the URL to trigger the IR signal. I use a TV as an external monitor for my laptop running Linux. Using curl, I was able to automatically power on the TV when the laptop starts up and power off when I shut down the laptop. I used black PVC insulation tape to disguise the wires connected to the transmitter module. I stuck the module to the TV using blue tag. It's not very attractive, but it works very well. And in the same way, I'm able to turn the TV off. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.